Today, we're coming to you from the Potomac River. Hi everyone, welcome to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect. My name is Chelsea McKinney, your host, as we explore all types of conservation careers, new animals, and different types of technology that conservation professionals use to help and study wildlife. Today, we're coming to you from the Potomac River, the same one that flows through Washington, D.C. Right now, we're about 70 miles northwest of the capital on this warm, sunny day. This river is home to lots of wildlife. We have deer, raccoons, geese, and osprey that all use the waters of the Potomac. But below the water, there are even more fascinating creatures. Certainly, the river has lots of fish, but there are also other, less obvious animals that are just as important. The mussels. But I'm not talking to you about these kinds of mussels. I'm talking to you about a special group of animals called the freshwater mussels. Joining us today, we have our freshwater mussel expert, Matthew Patterson from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Matthew, can you tell us a little bit about the freshwater mussel? Sure. Freshwater mussels are closely related to things like clams and oysters that you might get in a seafood restaurant or somewhere, but they live in freshwater like the Potomac River here. I just brought a few examples to, to look at, and they have kind of funny names too. <laughs> This one is called a pink heel splitter. You can see the pink coloration on the inside of the shell. And the reason it's called a heel splitter is because it sits in this, the river bottom like this. And it has this wing that sticks up. And if you're walking along and you step on that. That could hurt. Could hurt, for sure. <laughs> this one is a little bit smaller. It's called a pimple back. You can notice all the pimples on the back. So they got some kind of funny names. <laughs> this one is a rabbit's foot sort of looks like a rabbit's foot a little bit. And then they can be really small and really colorful. You can see the, oh, the yeah. those are called chevrons on the outside, the green rays on the, on the shell, very pretty. Why are these freshwater mussels so important? They're really important because they live in the bottom of the stream. They can be there in very large numbers and they're filter feeders and they're really good at, at filtering water. So they're taking out things like bacteria and viruses and contaminants out of the water to protect not only us as, as people, but also other animals that live in the stream. Now, many populations of the freshwater mussels have become threatened or endangered. Why, why is that? It's a, a lot of different factors, but the primary one is habitat loss. A lot of streams in the United States have been impounded or dammed for hydropower or navigation and mussels like really fast moving water so damming it up causes a problem for them. Another issue and actually we just pulled these right out of the Potomac here is invasive species and this is an Asian clam and you can see just picking up quite a few just in one handful and these invasive species they're also filter feeders so they can compete with mussels for food. Now, what's being done to help the mussels, and how is technology playing a role in that? Well, several agencies, including the Fish and Wildlife Service, have facilities where they grow baby mussels in the laboratory for release out into rivers like this. Um, and there's, there's a fair amount of technology involved where the systems that you hold the mussels in, the places where they live, and the, the food that you provide them, you grow it on station, requires some uh, significant technology to do that. The team spent a day on West Virginia's Kakeepin River studying its mussel population. So mussel biologists spend a fair amount of time out in the river looking for mussels, especially in the summertime when it's nice and warm and the water is low and clear where you can see mussels. And one thing we like to use is a mask and snorkel. You can see underwater and breathe underwater with one of these. And the closer you get your face to the bottom of the river, the better chance you are gonna have of seeing the mussels. 
snorkelers brought up several kinds of mussels. The researchers identified and measured the mussels. This data tells scientists how the river's mussels are doing. It was fascinating that there was so much life below the stream surface. Is there anything that we can do or our viewers can do from home to help these freshwater mussels? Well, like I said before, they're really sensitive to water quality. So anything you can do to prevent pollution from getting into the stream would be very beneficial for freshwater mussels. So if we're boating this summer, the weather is great to boat on. Simply pick up any plastic containers or bottles that we see and just make sure we're recycling those. That would be great, yes. Awesome. Thank you, Matthew, so very much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's amazing when we can combine our passions using the latest technology and our love of nature to help protect wildlife and our wild places. We'll see you guys next time on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.